Hi everybody, it's Daniel and welcome to another video by The Entropy System. Within systems, age can be kind of complicated. Especially after the last few videos that Kim Kim has posted, we've got a lot of comments saying, wow, has Kim Kim aged up? Is she still 12? She seems so mature for her age. And so I wanted to take some time and address uh, numeric age of alters versus uh, mental and emotional maturity of alters and how that kind of works together within our system. I want to preface by saying that I have, don't think I've ever actually talked to other systems about this, so the stuff that I'm going to say about how age identification works with us, I can only testify to how that works within the entropy system. A lot of what we perceive as indicators of a certain age have to do with brain development and life experience. In our system, even the youngest identifying headmate has a brain that is a fully developed adult brain. And for example, Michelle, who identifies as seven, has more life experience than any seven-year-old outside of a system because it's a lot more than seven years. <laughs> so how do we work this out in the entropy system? How do we come to terms with numeric age versus mental and emotional maturity? For us, our identified numeric age has to do with a significant moment in our individual existences. Uh, Kit once explained it to someone by describing it as we are time capsules of sorts. And even though we may act older or younger than the age we identify with, that number is extremely important because that number signifies sort of a defining moment in our individual lives, whether that be some kind of significant trauma or a time where we were most active and therefore adapted most to that physical age. Kit, for example, identified as 16 for a very, very long time because it was during high school that Wynn needed her the most. There was a lot of pressure for her to live up to this idea of a perfect submissive Christian girl. So Kit took all those desires uh, and like natural mental development of wanting to act out and have fun. And so 16 was sort of her defining number for a very, very long time. And she really held to that sort of party girl, wild thing, I'm the release of the system. And it wasn't until she started working as a co-host that she decided to age up with the body, like jump from identifying as 16 to identifying as 28. But that didn't have anything to do with the number she identified with. She changed her number to match how she felt and not the other way around. Now, Kit was able to do that really easily, but some of us are not able to do that as well. For example, Kim Kim identifies as 12 because the year that the body was 12 was extremely significant for her, and she has had trouble moving on from the event that caused her to go into hibernation, for lack of a better term. However, on an emotional and mental level, Kim Kim is an adult. She has the emotional maturity to be able to be her own caretaker and not rely on others to fulfill that role for her. And we honor that. We allow her to live the life that she feels comfortable living and make adult choices, even though the number she identifies with is 12. We don't necessarily follow numeric age in the same way we would with a person outside the system. You know, let's say I met a, an individual, you know, with, with one personality who was 12, and they were very mature. You know, if that person were put in my care, I would still monitor them. I would allow them to continue to explore the world and, and express themselves in healthy ways. But a 12-year-old still only has 12 years of experience and still has a lot of developmental milestones, both physically and socially, that they're going to need to pass. Kim Kim is not that way. There's something we use as a reference point to kind of scan one another for our emotional maturity and how well we can leave each other to function unmonitored. And that's the stages of psychosocial development, which was put together by Eric Erickson. The steps are as follows. The first stage is trust versus mistrust. And this happens about the age from infancy to 12 months. During this time period, a person learns 
if adults are trustworthy or not, based on if their basic needs are being taken care of. Next comes autonomy versus self-doubt, which happens around the ages of one to three. This is where a child either learns to trust themselves in their own decision-making, you'll see a lot of toddlers at this age deciding that they want to dress themselves and feed themselves and do all this stuff, or during this time period, a toddler whose desires to be autonomous are stifled or shamed learns to develop a sense of shame and guilt about themselves. From 6 to 12, you have industry versus inferiority. This is where a child starts comparing where they are with their peers, and if they're given proper support and learn how to get along with other people, then they can develop a sense of pride and accomplishment. However, if those needs are not met, that person might develop a sense of inferiority about themselves. Identity versus role confusion happens in adolescence between the age of 12 and 18. Now that a child has learned how to be part of a group, they have to learn how they view themselves as an individual. Who are they at the core? How do they fit in? Where do they want to go in their life? And even though I identify as 19, which is past this stage, this is about where I am. My developmental milestone that I am processing through at the moment is trying to figure out who I am and how I fit into things and learning to assert myself and be confident in me and not just view myself as an insignificant part of a group. Next is called intimacy versus isolation, and this happens between 20s and 40s of an adult's life. And this is where Kim Kim is at. She already has that strong, secure sense of self that is developed in most adolescents around the age of 18. And now she is at a stage where she's learning how to have adult relationships. Relationships where she s maintains her sense of autonomy and self while still being able to interact and support other people. So if you looked at this chart, you could probably switch our ages and that would be fairly accurate. But we would never do that, and we ask people never to do that, because our numbers are important to us. They are as much a part of us as our name, even if mentally it doesn't match. And that's complicated, and it's weird. And it can sometimes take people a while to be comfortable with the idea. And really, at the end of the day, it's okay if it doesn't make sense, if it's okay if it seems weird or off or you really don't understand. The important thing is to trust and respect the system, just as you would trust and respect anyone's personal identity. Try not to set limits or expectations based on numerical age when working with a system, and rather get to know the alters themselves and see what their personality is like, and define how you interact with them based on that. If you're interested in reading up on the rest of the stages of psychosocial development, I'll go ahead and put a couple links in the description below. And if you're a part of a system, please comment on how age affects you guys. How do you navigate numerical age versus psychological age? Or is it something you've put much thought into at all? I love hearing your guys' perspectives, so please, please share those stories. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all have a super great day. Bye! Hey everybody, it's Wynn. I want to give a big thank you shout out to Abby, Liz Joyce, and Shoshi Bauer, and all of our other patrons for supporting this channel and helping us be what we are. If you're interested in becoming a patron, a link to our Patreon is in the description below. If you are interested in sending fan mail of any kind, our P.O. Box address is also in the description below. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and all you in Tropical Fish have a super great day. Bye!